Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by AMS Media. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu, and we're back with another episode of the Player Review Series. Apologies, it's been a couple of days since we've released one of these, but there's been plenty of content in between. If you haven't checked it out already, check out our interview with Adrian Clark earlier in the week. That was a brilliant show. Really, really enjoyed talking to Adrian. My thanks to him again for taking the time out to join me and the, the podcast made the press, and that's something we're really, really proud of. Um, there were quotes uh, taken from it, used in the Metro, in the Express, at Goal.com, and, and various other websites as well. So we're really proud of that. Um, and, and, you know, it's a great bit of exposure for, for the work that we're doing here. So a big thank you to everybody who's tuned in so far, and to those of you who are going to go and tune into it and check it out. We also released the podcast earlier this morning with Terry Phelan, former Manchester City, former Leeds, former Chelsea, former Sheffield United, former Everton, and former Republic of Ireland. He's played for everyone, Terry Phelan. He's a great lad, great friend of the show, and he joined me to talk about some of his former clubs as well, and a bit of content that strayed away a little bit from the Arsenal theme, but we thought we'd mix it up a little bit this week. So, back to the player review series, and the topic of today's edition is Alexander Lacazette, as promised. Um, He is a player who has come in for a a fair amount of criticism this season. Um, Some of it has been fair, Some of it has been unjust, in my personal opinion. Of course, I want to hear from you guys in the comments what you think and what you think of my comments that are going to follow. Um, When I think about Alexander Lacazette, I think of a player who's always committed, always works extremely hard for the team, not afraid to put himself about, not afraid to put his body on the line, and someone who cares. He, he, He does care. And, you know, often people say he cares about Arsenal, it doesn't really matter whether he cares about Arsenal or whether he cares about his own personal success. The fact is, he's playing in an Arsenal shirt. So as long as he's given 100%, I don't really care what his motivations are. As long as Arsenal Football Club are benefiting from that drive and that passion and that desire to succeed. I think you could accuse Alexander Lacazette of a lot of things, but you can't accuse him of not trying. Um, and I guess that is the the base isn't it for any good player it is to care about what they're doing is to put that premium effort in and to work really really hard and then let their talent do the talking and often there's players with great talent and there are a few in this Arsenal team who perhaps their application at times lets them down and therefore we don't see their talent as often as we should so in Alexander Lacazette's case, I don't think you can say that. I don't think you can say that he doesn't try hard enough, that he doesn't work hard enough, and that he doesn't care about the cause. I think he does. Um, criticism that's often thrown at Alexander Lacazette is the fact that he doesn't score enough goals. And he's made 26 appearances in all competitions this season, scoring nine goals and providing three assists. Now, is that enough for a centre-forward? Some would argue no. Um, it's not one in two, but it's not far off that, I suppose. Um, nah, actually it is, hmm, it's probably one in three, isn't it? Nine, 18, 27. Yeah, it's nearly one in three. Um, trying to use my, my maths there, which I'm not great at admittedly, but yeah, it's, it's not the greatest goal return, but Alexander Lacazette, in my opinion, has done a lot of work up front for Arsenal this season. That probably goes unnoticed. He's had to hold the ball up. He's often occupied centre-halves in order for the likes of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to come in from that left-hand side uh, undetected and score. And I think that Lacazette is almost sacrificed for that. I think similar to Bobby Firmino at Liverpool in the way that maybe his goal return isn't where you'd like it to be, but perhaps some of his good work does go unnoticed and it's unfair to judge him solely on his goal return. Now, when you look at other players around who um, you know, are, are labelled with that same sort of or tarnished, I should say, or painted even with that same brush. There are a few. Leeds United's Patrick Bamford is another one. And I do quite a bit of work on Leeds United at the moment. And people will probably be sitting there wondering why I always use them as an example. But it's because it's a club that I followed very, very closely this season due to my work. And and it's a club that I write about on a daily basis. So, um, you know, I, I do follow what's going on and I have an understanding of what's going on there. And Patrick Bamford is someone who gets... All the same criticisms, actually, that Alexander Lacazette does. He doesn't score enough goals. He misses opportunities. What does he actually bring to the table, etc., etc., etc.? But no matter what, Marcello Bielsa always picks Bamford because what he does is he brings something different to the team. And that's something, it's probably something that Lacazette brings to the team 
sometimes. I'm not going to say he does it all the time because there are games where I look at him and I think, actually, you're you're offering absolutely nothing. So, um, you know, I, I think with Lacazette, I think he's a bit hit and miss at the moment. And that's one of the big problems. And to evidence that, you know, and the fact that whoever's been in charge of the team this season, whether that's been Unai Emery, Freddie Lundberg or Mikel Arteta, to evidence that they also believe he is very hit and miss, he's only started in 54% of our Premier League games. He's played 52% of our total Premier League minutes. Of course, there's been some injuries in there and you've got to take that into account. But his percentage of of you know, starts, I guess, in the Premier League is nowhere near where it should be, even when you take into account the injuries. Therefore, that signifies to me that the managers, whoever it's been, like I said, Unai Emery, Freddie Lundberg, uh, now Mikel Arteta, aren't sure that Alexander Lacazette delivers what is needed every single time he takes to the field. And therefore, it's a fair debate to have and it's a fair criticism to throw at him. You know, I'm, I'm not, trying to sit here criticising Arsenal players for the sake of it. But the whole point of this series is to assess whether I believe Arsenal should keep this player or whether they should move him on. And more importantly, to hear what you guys have to say in the comments as well. Alexander Lacazette, according to transfermarket.co.uk, is currently valued at £54 million. Now, would I keep him? Would I sell him? If I'm basing this on his goal return... I think there's a case to sell him. But then you've got to take into account certain other factors. For example, will Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang be moving on this summer? In which case, I don't think we can afford to allow Lacazette to go as well. Will Arsenal have enough of a transfer budget in the summer? If not, then perhaps Alexander Lacazette could be an opportunity to raise some funds. We know that the likes of Atletico Madrid were after him when he joined Arsenal. It's not to say that that interest is still there, but we know that Lacazette is a player who, let's face it, there'll be a lot of clubs out there who, you know, could do a lot worse and will probably be interested in him. Would we get the £54 million for him that um, that transfermarket.co.uk value him at? Maybe not, maybe not. And the fact that he has been in and out of the team this season and the fact that Mikel Arteta has at times turned to Eddie Nketiah, a young rookie striker um, ahead of Alexander Lacazette, probably has done a bit of damage to that value. Um, and, and of course, you know, I'm not suggesting that clubs will, you know, just solely look at his goal record before making a decision. Of course, they'll do their, their due diligence. They'll, they'll scout the player extensively in most cases. But on the surface, when you look at the statistics, nine goals, three assists, 26 appearances, it isn't great. And so I would question whether he is still worth £54 million in today's market, whether somebody would be willing to put that money on the table. And a player is only worth as much as a club are willing to pay for him, I guess. Um, So, you know, lots of questions about Alexander Lacazette. What are the things that he does well? As I've said, I think he battles really well for the Arsenal. I think he holds play up really well. Very effective with his back to goal. And in years gone by, what I really liked about him was his ability to turn in those tight spaces, um, turn in tight situations and often get good shots off on goal. You'd often see Alexander Lacazette squeeze the ball in from really tight angles at the near post, sort of going into the roof of the net. You'd see him rifle shots at people, take a touch and spin sharply and, and fire on goal. That's not really happening as often anymore. And I don't know whether that's down to Alexander Lacazette not being at the level he is in terms of his, or the level he was in terms of his ability. I don't think that's the case. I think it's probably a case of confidence. And I think as a striker, confidence is such a huge issue. I played as a striker, um, not, not at a professional level, but I played to a very good level. Um, was in some really, really good teams that won some, you know, some district and county things, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, I can say from experience, and I know, again, it's not the same level and I'm not making the comparison, but I can say that when you're a striker and you're overthinking scoring goals, it can become a problem for you. You just take that extra touch. You just have that extra thought in your mind and instinct doesn't take over anymore. It's about 
you know, and it's about getting out of that mindset again. And sometimes it takes a bit of fortune. You know, there was that goal he scored against Newcastle United where it almost cannoned off the wrong foot. Um, and he swung his right boot at it and it came off the left boot and went in. And sometimes you need that bit of luck. You need that bit of fortune to get yourself out of that rut. Um, and, and, you know, we, we don't know now because, of course, football's been suspended, etc. We all know what's going on in the world. Um and so it's difficult to say whether he's going to push on. But I think given that his contract expires in 2022, June, that Arsenal may well need to uh, generate some funds to strengthen in other areas. The fact that Mikel Arteta has great belief in Eddie and Ketia, the fact that a lot of us and, of course, Mikel Arteta have good, strong belief in Gabriel Martinelli, if we could keep Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang this summer, I would probably consider moving Alexander Lacazette on if the right money was on the table. That is my opinion. That is my view. That is not fact. And I'm not trying to force it on you as if it is fact. It's my view. And I want to hear your views in the comments section. Let me know what you think. Would you sell Alexander Lacazette in order to fund uh, some other deals, perhaps, in order to bring somebody else in, in order to perhaps strengthening other areas, not necessarily in the front line. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Going to switch over to Chris Davis and let's hear his thoughts on uh, Alexander Lacazette and what he would do if he was in charge of the transfer affairs at Arsenal. Got to say as well, though, it's only if someone's willing to pay for it. So, you know, you, this is all hypothetical, but looking at it in this series, the whole point here is we're trying to establish perhaps the steps that Mikel Arteta may be looking to take over the summer in order to A, generate funds and, and get this squad looking a bit more like the one he wants to see. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, and here's Chris Davison. Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well. So Harry's focusing on Alexander Lacazette in this video and well, where do we start with Laka? I think just briefly going back a few years ago when we brought him into the football club, obviously Wenger was in charge. We were bringing in a prolific goal scorer who had been banging in the goals for fun over in France for, um, for Lyon. And I was very excited about the qualities that Lacazette would bring to Arsenal. Now, overall, since he has arrived, since he did arrive um, a few seasons ago, I think he's done very well for us. Um, he scored some important goals, put in some great performances. He's a very hard-working player and he's just been a top professional um, whilst he's been here. Um now, focusing on this season, those goals that uh, Lacazette is very well known for over the last few years have dried up. And um, he probably hasn't been as prolific and lethal in front of goal as um, we all would have hoped for. And uh, there's no denying that. But also, the criticism that he's received um, this season, I think, has been a little bit over the top. Not all of it, because... Of course, when you pay 40 or over 40 million for a striker, particularly in these sort of um, days as well, with the, the, the rises in the financial market for players, you expect them to put in top class performances every game. However, um, some may argue that Lacazette hasn't done that in recent times. So, look, um, there's, there's no doubt that Lacazette's struggled this season um, and I think we've got to bear in mind that he obviously struggled with an injury um, earlier on in the campaign as well so that would have held him back a little bit not ideal but from my point of view and I've got no doubt whatsoever that once Lacazette gets that confidence um, back uh, he'll start scoring goals for fun again um, because he's got the ability to do that we've all seen it in the past even though he's he's gone through some some difficult times we all know the talent that Lacazette has got. Um, so I think, you know, any striker in the world of football, no matter how good they are, will tell you that it is just part of being a forward when those goals dry up. Um, and unfortunately, that has been the case with Laka this season. But overall, I've I've been really happy with Laka. I think he's, he's a, still a top player. Um, and he's a hard worker who works his socks off every every single match and his hold up play as well not just about the scoring goals as a forward his hold up play and his, his uh, teamwork his leadership um, has been absolutely exceptional um, but looking to the future um, very briefly you know we've obviously still got a Bamiang at the moment and um, 
I hope we can hold on to him for even longer. And I think Pierre's even made it um, pretty clear um, that he prefers to play as a centre forward. Um, and I think that's actually where we get the best out of uh, Uber, to be fair, where his best position is. Um, and if we need to keep him happy, which we will do, then we'll have to play him in his preferred position, um, in his best position. Uh, and that will probably ultimately mean that Lacazette won't get as many games uh, as he would have hoped for. So looking ahead to the summer, business is business at the end of the day. And if we can keep Uber, um, then I, I would look to sell Lacazette um, and, and try and get a good sum for him with some reported interest from Atletico Madrid. And then use that money to reinvest and, and put in to strengthen the, uh, the rest of the team. So, uh, you know... We'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, yeah, overall, I, I really rate Lacazette. I think he's a top player. And once he gets that confidence back, I, I think he'll he'll start scoring goals for fun again. So just a few brief points for me on, on Alexandra Lacazette. I'll be interested to see and hear what Harry and the rest of you have to think as well. So thank you for listening, guys. Take care. My massive thanks to Chris Davison for his contribution once again. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this brief episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. You know the drill by now. If you're listening via the audio, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That does help massively. Um, and of course, check out the Chronicles AFC website, chroniclesafc.com. We've got some blog content going up on there at the moment as well. So um, I know everyone's struggling with that football. It's so boring at the moment, isn't it? We appreciate that obviously there is a lot going on in the world and that comes first and the health and safety of people is paramount first and foremost. But it is a really difficult time, uh, you know, as football writers, as football content creators at the minute and we're making every effort to keep going and keep bringing you engaging content. I guess next week we're going to be looking back at some classic Arsenal games. We're going to be hosting a fans phone-in in the coming days so stay tuned to our twitter feed at chronicles underscore afc for information on that and uh, until next time take care enjoy your weekend stay safe wash your hands follow the government advice you know the draw by now and we'll be back very very soon take care ciao